Hi, uh, my name is Yahaya Maikori. It's indeed my pleasure this on the impact of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement on an emerging esports market in Africa. Uh, first of all, what is the African Continental Free Trade Agreement? Uh, this was an agreement that was signed three, four years ago by 24 African countries in uh, Kigali. And the whole idea was to create or is to create a single African market. Um, and that became so necessary simply because trade or intra-African trade is probably the least amongst all the continents. Um, if you look at uh, the intra-African trade taking place currently, uh, it accounts for about 15% of the GDP of Africa. Uh, you can compare that to what happens in Europe. Euro is about 70% intra-African trade. Uh, in North America, it's about 55%. In Asia, it's um, 44% thereabout. Anyway, uh, just like the Brexit uh, or the European Union, the whole idea is to create a single market for, for Africans uh, for the free movement of goods and services to reduce tariffs and to encourage business among uh, all the African countries. Uh, prior to now, now, even up to now, it's for those who are well-known for, 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 for versatile travelers, you find out that it's pretty easier to go to Europe or to go to some African countries. There are African countries that you get only one flight from, let's even say from South Africa to those countries or from Kenya to those countries, uh, simply because of the lack of integration in terms of the way and the manner in which we trade ourselves. Uh, a few of such initiatives exist in terms of uh, ECOWAS, which is the economic uh, community of West African countries. We have something similar to that in Southern Africa as well. Anyway, uh, in, in, in just to summarize it, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is Africa's quest to create a single market to be able to improve on the economy, to improve on the movement of goods, services, labor, uh, have small, uh, uh, lower tariffs for, 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 for goods and services coming from uh, member African states. And of course, to do this, uh, so that agreement was signed in Kigali, um, and of course, as of last year, 44 out of the 55 African countries had already signed to this agreement. And this agreement is going to be implemented in different stages. First among them is what they call phase one, which covers trade in goods and services and dispute settlement. The second has to do with investments, competition policy, and intellectual property rights. Um, as, as we speak, uh, with the growth of the digital economy and the importance and the impact in global trade, we, do, we have not been able to see any initiative that captures that. And as a result of that, the World Bank came up with the initiative called Digital Economy for Africa. And part of what they're trying to do is to educate, empower, train, uh, open up discussions on how this uh, uh, how the digital economy is going to operate in within the scope or within the parameters of this free uh, trade uh, treaty. And of course, esports, which is predominantly a digital activity, um, comes firmly into the scope of the digital economy, which has not been catered for originally, but which is being initiated by means of enlightenment, education, and moral situation by the World Bank. And of course, to talk about that, you have to look at the infrastructure deficits. And the imbalance in most African countries becomes even harder for this to be articulated. Notwithstanding, without a doubt, uh, trade has moved from mere movement of physical goods to even online, remote, and e-commerce. It forms part and parcel of trade, especially in the post-COVID era we are going to see so many industries move, migrate from the traditional uh, scope in which we knew them to, to this, uh, to, to, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the online uh, space. And of course, e-commerce becomes the big thing. The fundamental thing that is gratifying is 
the improvement of payment. Uh, I think without a doubt, Africa is way ahead of so many other continents in terms of payments. Uh, cryptocurrencies as well have also been adopted much faster than other uh, countries outside of Asia. Anyway, um, so now that the African Continental Trade Agreement is being implemented, sports has not been mentioned. The digital economy, which is key and fundamental to esports, has really not been taken into consideration. How is that going to impact on esports going forward? Uh, without a doubt, without bringing out the figures, we know very clearly that esports uh, was one of the few industries that grew during the COVID era. And what that simply means is that Africans are going to be engage the youthful population of Africa, which has about 1.5, 1.3 million people with a population less than 70, all digital natives are going to be players in the e-sports. And so what are the benefits? While we are aware that this is still not something that's gonna happen immediately, we know that going forward opportunities, immense opportunities as the market continues to coalesce or to converge, immense opportunities are going to Oga to those who found themselves enmeshed in the esports industry. Uh, before I go again into the what the opportunities are for the esports, you need to look at what the African um, Union Sports Council is. This is also an initiative or an organ of the African Union, just like the African Continental Trade Agreement, which is a, a treaty of the African Union, uh, because, um, formed to help push, foster understanding, cultural integration, and understanding through sports knowing that sports is, uh, is considered a part of culture, part of education, and more importantly, it's an existing industry on its own that will help grow the economy like elsewhere. So what are the potential benefits? I think for those uh, people who are game developers, benefit in terms of intellectual property, the protection of intellectual property, uh, unlike Europe, when we have the Spain or the Madrid Agreement, whereby intellectual property is harnessed and enforced from one central office, we do not have that. And so in Africa, for you to be able to uh, register any kind of your IP, for example, trademarks, patents, you need to go to almost every single country to do that. What this does, especially for those who have IP, is to have a central place where they are going to register their patents, their rights, and of course, as well, they can enforce their rights in different African countries or signatures of the African country with similar laws without having to duplicate those expenses. So I think that's the biggest immediate benefit to African countries, uh, to people in the sports industry, once this is implemented because of the centrality of the IP office. And so you have a one-stop uh, office when it comes to that. Another thing is the movement of developers. So you can have developers or people uh, who either in terms of sports promotion or tournaments or training or whatever you call it, whatever the value chain, in, 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 uh, whatever the value chain is for esports, there can be free movement of labor, free movement of goods with little or no tariff. In short, with um, all sorts of benefits accruing to such people. So we will see free movement. And of course that allows for exchange, um, creation of hubs, uh, promotion, marketing from a central place. And of course we spoke earlier on about the availability of different payment system, which means that we move beyond subscription based games to even in, uh, in, in, in app payments for, for that. Well, another benefit is the cultural exchange that comes into it. And so probably we can look at we building a huge esports tournament, the same way we have the African uh, uh, football tournament. Probably with this uh, collapse of some of these barriers, we can see an esports industry, an esports uh, cup that basically trickles down to the other member nations. So we can potentially see a huge industry, probably going to go bigger than even what uh, soccer or other bigger games have to offer. Uh, so while we have noted that most of these uh, goals are still a far, are still a long way from being achieved at this point, we have taken into cognizance the fact that 
the disparity in our economies are different in terms of, so when you look at uh, South Africa and Nigeria, which are the biggest economies, we'll probably have the, the, some of the infrastructure relied, uh, the numbers to push uh, esports ecosystem. There are many other smaller countries that do not have this capacity. We can countries like Benin, Togo, uh, Siolon, that uh, average about two, three million people. So the disparity in the economy might also be a downside to how we're able to grow the esports industry. But notwithstanding, uh, it's a game of numbers, working collectively, either as uh, regional bodies or as individual countries, uh, there are opportunities for us to grow esports as an industry. It might be, take time to get there, but definitely the opportunities abound, especially when you look at what they've done in terms of intellectual property. We have underlining, uh, underlining ownership of the games or the development or all the copyright and other related rights that accrue from running a proper esports industry. So African Continental Trade Agreement, though esports is not focused on it, uh, they're not focused on esports for now, and though there is really no uh, framework for the digital economy, we know that the World Bank is working hand in hand with the states and the African Union to see how they can implement that. And most likely, what you're going to see is, um, in terms of esports, is regional regional competition making an African thing. The bigger countries with key infrastructure might probably start off, and then the smaller countries will eventually join once they are up to date with their or they have comparative uh, uh, infrastructure. Um, and of course, esports has a whole future ahead of it uh, for the African continent.